What's up guys, Rogue9 here and in this special episode I will be going into full detail on some experiments I've been running to test the new NVIDIA performance enhancing graphics settings available in Rainbow Six Siege, specifically Reflex and DLSS. I will be answering the following questions you may have. What are these systems? How do they work? How did I test their performance boosting capabilities? What results did they achieve for my gaming PCs? And when you should, and more importantly, when you shouldn't, be activating these settings. These tests were made possible by Nvidia and Alienware, so many thanks for their support. The video will be split into two segments, one for each of the two systems I tested and will further break down into an overview of what the graphics setting I am testing does and how it works, a brief mention of my PC hardware specs, an overview of my testing methodology and a summary of my results with recommendations of whether or not you should use this new graphics setting in Rainbow Six Siege. Let's kick things off with my testing of the NVIDIA Reflex system in Rainbow Six Siege. The purpose of Reflex is to reduce PC latency, which forms a large part of your end-to-end -end system latency. So basically how long it takes between you clicking a mouse button or hitting a key on your keyboard, those inputs being processed by the game and your hardware, and then resulting in an action displayed on your screen. This time saving is achieved by synchronizing your system's processor and graphics card, and the resulting benefit for you is that you will have a more responsive system, which will help you acquire targets more quickly quickly, minimize Pika's advantage and even improve your hit detection on fast moving targets. I tested the Reflex option in Rainbow Six Siege using my main gaming PC, which has a pretty old Intel 7700K processor and a brand new RTX 3080 graphics card. You can take advantage of Reflex in Rainbow Six Siege with any 30, 20 or even 10 series Nvidia graphics card, so if you haven't managed to upgrade to a brand new GPU yet, don't worry, this system will still benefit you. Another key piece of hardware that was crucial to me being able to reliably test the benefits that Reflex is able to provide was the Alienware 2521H eSports Ready Gaming Monitor. Firstly, it has an inbuilt latency analyzer chip that allowed me to conduct my tests, but beyond that it is built for competitive gameplay with amazing frame rate and responsiveness. The refresh rate of 360Hz combined with the monitor's ultra-fast 1 millisecond response time IPS panel and 99% sRGB color coverage not only delivers vibrant and smooth images but importantly for our tests, it helps minimize the display latency and therefore also plays an important part in reducing end-to-end -end latency as we will see in the results shortly. Now, methodology. How did I go about testing NVIDIA Reflex for myself? Like I mentioned, the tests all revolved around the latency analyzer built into the Alienware 25. First, I connected my mouse directly to the monitor. This allows the chip to precisely measure when mouse button 1 is clicked. Then I went into the graphics settings in Siege and I turned the latency flash indicator on. If you're just playing Siege regularly, definitely keep this indicator turned off because it does nothing to improve your system's performance. All it does is flash a little white box on the left hand side of the screen every time a mouse click is detected and processed. Now once that setup was completed, I activated the latency measuring mode in the monitor's inbuilt settings and that allows you to move a little sensor box over to the flashing indicator provided by the game so that the Alienware monitor can physically detect and measure the exact time when that box shows up. Uh, please excuse the odd looking footage here, in order to be able to capture the monitor's performance measuring overlay, I had to physically film the screen with my camera and of course that introduced some artifacting. So now the monitor can measure the time it takes from mouse click to the white box rendering on screen, accurately providing us with the full end-to-end -end latency broken down into mouse latency and PC and display latency down to one ten thousandth of a second. That measurement can be captured and logged by the GeForce Experience performance overlay to provide full and comprehensive performance statistics for each and every click. That's the setup. Then all that remained for me to do was run my test scenarios and measure the results. Results. First, I fired 100 shots while running Siege at 60 FPS with Reflex turned off, 100 shots at 60 FPS with Reflex on, and 100 shots at 360 FPS Reflex on. And here are my results. My mean average PC and display latencies were 65.84 milliseconds, 
52.76 milliseconds and an incredible 7.27 milliseconds. My highest measurements in each of these scenarios were 83.5 milliseconds, 65.6 milliseconds and 15 milliseconds with the lowest result out of the 100 shots being 52.3 milliseconds, 20.6 milliseconds and 3.6 milliseconds. These results are pretty similar to the ones that Nvidia achieved in their tests and they had the advantage of owning a phantom high speed camera to allow them to also record the screen in slow motion which really shows off the practical effects that these latency differences will have on your gaming experience and your ability to compete. Even with a high end graphics card, Nvidia Reflex is able to provide you with a significant performance boost but if you couple that with a high end monitor and higher frame rate, that's when you really begin to see the results that will make a difference. And before we move on to my DLSS tests, here is one last pro tip I can give you based on what I discovered during my tests. If you have a G-Sync capable monitor, I highly recommend that you turn the V-Sync option in your game's graphics menu off whenever you're playing a competitive fast paced game. Even if your monitor is limited to a lower frame rate, turning VSync off will allow your system to run at higher FPS in the background and that alone can help reduce end to end system latency. So as long as you're not getting any horizontal tears, keep that setting off. Now over to DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling. This system is an AI driven rendering technology that taps into dedicated processors in GeForce RTX graphics cards to boost your frame rates while at the same time providing crisp and sharp images in your favorite games including Rainbow Six Siege. The technology is squarely aimed at those of us who are playing on higher resolutions such as 1440p, 4K or 8K. I tested this setting on two different PCs, my first one which you already know about, i7 7700K plus 3080 with the Alienware 25 monitor attached running at 1080p and a second PC fitted with an i9 11900KF processor and a GeForce RTX 3090 GPU attached to a 4K monitor running at 60Hz. In order to test the impact on FPS that all of the various DLSS settings in the Siege graphics menu have, I ran the game's inbuilt benchmark tool once for each of the settings. The results for the rig using the 4K monitor were really impressive. With DLSS off, Rainbow Six Siege only ran at an average 58 FPS. Not great, but on the quality setting, FPS already shot up to 233 average FPS. The balance setting gave us 255, performance pushed the system to 279 and ultra performance squeezed an amazing 305 average FPS out of the game running in 4K. Now if those results aren't convincing then I don't know what is. For PC setups where your graphics card is the bottleneck either because you're playing at a high resolution or because you're still on a 20 series GPU, turning on DLSS can do absolute wonders for your frame rate. But I advised caution with this setting as my second set of tests on my main gaming PC showed. For those specific tests, I was only running the game at 1080p and with a powerful graphics card, but a slightly aging CPU so the CPU was the bottleneck instead of the GPU. The results I received there showed the exact same average FPS for each and every DLSS setting. 321 FPS and those were actually a tiny bit lower than my results with DLSS off where I managed to get 337 average FPS. So DLSS is not a magic power up switch that will work for everyone. Let me summarize the limitations for you. First off, as the technical description tells us, the graphics option only works with RTX GPUs, so GeForce 20 series and upwards. If you're still on a GTX 10 series GPU, this system will not work for you, so keep it turned off. Beyond that, if you're playing at a relatively low resolution of 1080p or less, you may also want to quickly run the benchmarking system built into Siege. No need to run it for each and every setting, just run it once without DLSS and once with the setting on balanced or performance and compare the two results. If you're not getting a performance increase with DLSS on for your specific system, you're probably better off keeping it turned off because if your setup is anything like mine where the CPU is the limiting factor, you may even experience a tiny negative performance impact from activating DLSS. The 4K results showed that DLSS is an absolutely amazing system that will be instrumental at pushing gaming to the next level by allowing us to play at very high resolutions with pretty much no performance impact. But 
if you've not taken that step yet and you're still on a 1080p, just take a couple of minutes to run the benchmark a couple of times to make sure the system works for you. And there you go, I really enjoyed running these technical tests and I hope the insights I provided are useful to you when deciding whether or not these new settings will work for you. Many thanks once again to Nvidia and Alienware for supporting me in making this video and with that, many thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, do feel free to leave it a like or share it with friends who play Siege or other compatible games and I will see you in the next episode.